Welcome back. This is Brighter Morning with Bo, and I'm Bo Tiwari, and you're watching on MCTV in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, Multicultural TV. Our numbers are 609-6283, 609-6284 if you want to call. And we have Diane Haddad on the line. She is the former uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce in Tobago. And we will try to get the current uh, president as well. And Let's hear what Dan has to say. Uh, Dan, good morning. Very, very nice to see you. And uh, first of all, um, the people of Tobago have spoken. What do you think they are saying? All right. Well, let me, first, let me correct something. First of all, I am the chairman of the Tobago division of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Okay. And I'm not sure who is the that you will be calling next. But if it's right. Mr. Martin George, that is a different chamber. It's the Tobago Business Chamber. So let All me right. just correct that. So I am speaking in the capacity of chairman of the Tobago Division. Okay, so, I stand corrected on my apologies. <laughs> so so as, as we have a bright morning. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, and the name of the show could not be more fitting um, this morning based on what I have seen and heard up to two o'clock this morning when not only did my phone ring but text messages were there in abundance and persons even came to my home asking me to come and take a drive in the fresh air <laughs> and, I, and I was really really amazed as to the turbulence that was out there although they could not celebrate in mass it was amazing what the feeling was amongst persons who were up until the end and took the time out to make those calls. What do you think Tobagonians voted against and what do you think they voted for? Um, I, don't, I don't know that Tobagonians voted against anything. Um, I think what may have happened is Tobagonians have voted for change for opportunities for some measure of equality some measure of bringing the island into some order in terms of balance and fair treatment and i think that is what was the vote i don't know that they voted against anybody um if you would have heard the um incoming chief secretary as we are waiting to see mr farley augustin in his um speech he spoke of a lot of forgiveness, and I want to say that that is the true message that any leader who intends to bring change to the position that our country is in needs to speak of and then not just speak but act out. And I think that's a totally different message that we've ever heard. So that's why I was telling you, Boo, it's not about against. It's, a, it's really refreshing in terms of listening to what a speech would be and it wasn't that we know we had it and it wasn't that we were confident like that it was that listen there's room for all here and it was inviting and it was clean and i think that is what tobago particularly the youth are saying that they are happy to be a part of yeah well i mean tobago is an island of sixty thousand people i was looking at tourism figures uh, the other day and in in um, 2019 nearly 600,000 Trinidadians went to Tobago um, during that year 2019 so that the the small community in Tobago I mean they've got to live together regardless of party, party f affiliation and secondly Tobago is a place that Trinidad and Tobago that Trinidad and Trinidadians look at as a, a place of um, enjoyment and relaxation and more than that um, a place of fresh air i think um, as you yourself say so the harmonious development of of uh, tobago as an island and of trinidad and tobago as a nation i think it is something that we want uh, to see proceed now, how that form, what form that will take, we wait for the PDP to articulate as they take possession of the House of Assembly. 
because I gather that they are stronger on the issues of autonomy and self-governance uh, for Tobago uh, than has been previously articulated. So we'll see how that goes. What do you think are the prospects for business? Well, they have campaigned and, and marketed themselves a lot on the involvement of private sector, on private sector's development. Um, of course, we know over the years, and I would have been one that spoke about it over and over in terms of the, how that has been totally destroyed in major ways, both for the tourism and all the uh, um, ancillary services, those sectors, and even those that... Um, participate in business, retail, and so it, it's, it's been a storybook. So we look forward as well to see, as an entity, where that will go. Um, we have contributed in many ways to the past um, leaders that would have been in the chairs. And so as an organization, we will continue to support um, once invited to, and they have spoken about it in that way, in terms of a partnership, in terms of being there to carry the economy in a meaningful way. Um, hopefully the mindset of the check from Trinidad is not just conversation, but I guess they will all be put to the test. And should they not keep their word, they will be, of course, put on the hot plates and be roasted in the same manner because we know what it takes to develop an island and to keep people employed and to ensure that people are developed. That is a key, key, key point in terms of where we have seen our human development really take a nosedive over some of those years. So I think that they have their work cut out for them. Right. I know you have to go to another uh, program, so I wouldn't uh, keep you much longer, but I want to ask you a final question before we go. What is your greatest hope for the new House of Assembly uh, under the PDP in terms of uh, a development strategy for Tobago? What is your greatest hope as a private sector representative? Um, I, I would like to see that we are not at the table talking anymore. We've, we've spoken quite a lot, but of course, we're going to have to start conversations before we get to action. But that this island and its people and the people have invested in it are given an opportunity to really develop this place from an, uh, an independent perspective. An independent meaning that we are able to get the opportunities to grow, to make our investments work for us. And therefore, there are many aspects of the island and the formulas that are used that needs to be changed. And um, Mr. Augustine last night again spoke of that in a in a, a real way that that is going to be their mantra or their mandate to ensure that people are given those opportunities to develop themselves so that the dependency syndrome should take a back seat and that we should be proud not just proud from the perspective of we win or proud from the perspective that um they lose that kind of thing is is is, is his message was very forgiving. It was encompassing and, and, and encouraging for all to participate. And I think that lends um, a breath really, really of, as, as somebody said to me at 1.38 this morning, come outside and feel the air, it's different. And, and these were young people, professionals, who felt that they were not being given a chance. Calls even came in from overseas of Tobagonians who felt that they could not come home and contribute. And I am hoping that they would now feel different and we get the resources that mine, the intelligence, the intellect to come back to the island and see how best we can really make this place a great tourism product, a great agriculture place, a great farming place, a great, a, a great people place that we invite them. And 
we have 1.4 million persons sitting down in Trinidad. That's our, our first market. And we need to be able to invite them and then treat them well. So all of that animosity that we have between the two islands, I, I want to say this morning that we need to forgive each other. We need to forgive ourselves and we need to love. So the mandate this morning would be for us to start this newness in love, that four-letter word that is so powerful. All right. Well, you said three very, very important things there, forgiveness, love, and opportunity, and independence for the people while we talk about autonomy for Tobago. I want to thank you very much, Diane. It's been very good talking to you, and I know that you have been battling for years for a space for the private sector and for a proper role for the private sector in the development of Tobago. And I hope that your dreams and aspirations and uh, your uh, perspective uh, comes to realization under the new uh, government in Tobago that is to say, under the PDP. Thank you very much for being with us. We'll talk with you again on another occasion. Well, thank you very much for having me. And once I am in the chair, I will continue to do my job regardless of who is in the leadership role at the legislature and do my role to represent the private sector. We need to respect that entity and we need to really embrace it. So thank you for having me, Bo. Good for you. Okay, this is Brighter Morning with Bo. We've been talking to Diane Haddad, the president of the Chamber of Commerce in Tobago. And uh, she has always been a fighter. She has always been a person who spoke her mind. And she had only um, positive things to say, a message of hope uh, on prospects for Tobago at this time. We were talking about Tobago and the fact that Tobago voters have always played a pretty independent role in terms of the politics. Uh, whenever uh, a party loses, they blame the people. Uh, whenever a party wins, they love the people. And that's the irony of politics. The people simply respond to the politicians they have. And they Politics is at the level of psychology, you know. Whatever else it is, it takes place at a psychological level. And when in January the, re the results showed 6-6, six, six, um, it was clear that the people were moving away from the PNM, but that they did not yet sufficiently embrace the PDP to give them an outright win. And that would have been a major signal. And uh, um, I asked the, um, the leader of the PNM, Ms. Um, uh, Tracy Davidson Celestine here, um, w w w that they had lost six seats. And how do, does she think that they will recover in this election, um, you know, she gave the hopeful sign that they would recover. But, you know, once momentum builds and psychological uh, perceptions creep in, it's very hard to reverse that momentum. And I asked Farley Davidson, Farley Augustine, the same question. I said, you know, you got six seats. Why is it that the people did not have enough confidence to push you over the line and give you a majority? And um, he, he was very sanguine about it. He said that he felt that um, the people had uh, supported the PDP and they needed time and that uh, they, he felt that in this election they would carry the PDP over the bridge, so to speak. So uh, that has happened. That has happened. We did speak to Watson Duke too on two or three occasions before. Um, we tried to get Farley Davidson and uh, Farley uh, Augustine 
and uh, Tracy Davidson Celestine uh, on the program just prior to the elections, but the campaign was too heated to, for them to give time to television. Uh, so we hope that uh, we will get um, Mr. Duke and Mr. Um, Augustine to come and talk with us during the course of this week. This is Brighter Morning with Bo. You have a change of uh, Tobago House of Assembly government in Tobago, and the PDP has won the majority of seats. We don't know finally what that number will be, but it is clear that they have won at least nine seats, and it is very likely that they are going to win about 12 seats. Uh, which is a major sweep in the House of Assembly in Tobago. This is Brighter Morning with Bo. Uh, you are watching on MCTV in Trinidad and Tobago and the region. And the region. I am Bo Tiwari, and we now break for the news with Andrew Chan. <laughs>